Hello. Your task will be to create a creative piece of artwork using an online application called Desmos. So your creative artwork might look like this one here, which was created by a former student of mine. So we're going to talk about how to create something like this and then turn things over to you so you can get to work. So the first thing you want to do is go to desmos.com and you can click here where it says start graphing. And this will load up the Desmos online graphing calculator for you. Before you start, you want to click up here where it says create account, or if you've already created an account, you want to sign in. So I'm going to sign into my account. And the reason you want to do this is because any work you do will be saved. So you don't want to have to start over every day. Once you create an account, you can type in any equation, expression into this line here and Desmos will graph it for you. So let's say for your artwork, you want to create a, a smiley face. So you want to start with a circle. Well, to graph a circle, you know the equation is going to be x squared plus y squared It is equal to the radius squared. So I'm going to say, let's make that equal to 25 and see how that looks. Okay, that looks pretty good. So that is going to be this, the head of the smiley face. Okay, so let's create a smile. So I want the smile to look like a parabola. Well, I know the equation of a parabola is y equals x squared. Well, that's not exactly what I want this to look like. I want that parabola to be shifted down a little bit. And I recall that to shift a parabola vertically, I can add or subtract some number. So I'm going to say minus 4, and that puts that smiley face, that parabola, where I want it to be. However, we do not want that smile to go completely off of the face, so we need to restrict our smiley. To restrict this, I'm going to use the bracket key. So if I press my shift key, and then see how I have that curvy brace? That will allow me to do a restriction. So I can say I only want this curve to exist for certain x values. So I'm going to look on my graph, and I'm going to think to myself, OK, from about here to about over here, so that's about where x equals negative 1.7 should be less than our x value, which is less than positive 1.7. And if that looks how you want it to look, that's fine. If you want to change those numbers, we may do so. OK, so that is good. Let's put some eyes here. So we can graph eyes by plotting points. So I'm going to put in parentheses a couple of points here. Let's say we have negative 2, comma 1. Okay, there's one of the eyes, and let's say we have positive 2, comma 1. There is the second eye. All right, this person's face is coming together. We've got some eyes, we've got a mouth, we've got the head. Let's get some eyebrows here. So eyebrows, okay, I want to put some eyebrows. I'm going to make them diagonally up here. I don't really know exactly where they're going to go, so I'm just going to, going to type y equals x. And that obviously is not where I want this eyebrow to be. I want this eyebrow to be shifted up a little bit. So let me just try some different values. Y equals X plus 4. All right, that looks more like it. So there's where I want my eyebrow to be. But I want to restrict that eyebrow between certain X values like we did before. So I'm going to type in one of those curvy brackets. And let's say, let's take a look here. I think from about negative 2.5. So let me type in here. Negative 2.5 is less than x, which is less than, oh, let's say negative 1.5. See how that looks. Okay, that eyebrow looks good. Now, I do want that eyebrow to be a little thicker. So what I really want is another segment just like that, and I want to shade between those. Well, we can shade inequalities as well. So really, I want to shade the y values between this line and then a line just above that. So I'm going to say x plus 4 is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to x plus, let's go a little bit higher, so 4.3 perhaps. And there we go, that looks good. OK. Last thing I'm going to put on this person before we move on, let's put some hair on this person. So I want my hair to be, to be kind of curvy up there. So I'm going to say y equals the sine of x. So I'm going to graph a sine curve. I don't want this hair to be through the middle of this person's face, so let's shift this up by, I don't know, perhaps adding 4. Okay, that looks more like it. And maybe a little less curved, so I know I can say if I said y equals like 3 times the sine of x, that makes it curvier. 1 half, oh, that makes the amplitude less. I like that. I want to restrict the sine curve 
between the two edges of this person's head. Okay, and I can click on here to see what those points are. And once I see those intersection points, I can use that to determine my restrictions. So I saw those were at negative 3.05, which is going to be less than x, which is less than, on the other side, it was 2.67. And there's this person's hair. OK. Of course, I would continue and continue until this person looked exactly like I wanted them to look. I'll give you another example of a student who created one of these. So this student created an elephant. This person, I'm going to scroll down here, it took 66 different equations and inequalities to make this elephant here. And if you need more inspiration, if you want to take a look, go to www.desmos.com slash art. And on that site, you'll see a whole bunch of different artistic creations created by students just like you all over the country. And there's some beautiful artwork in there, and it should inspire you to do some great things.